Good morning, good morning, family God. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's your bro, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock, and we're here on the Blaze Bible Studies Morning Devo edition, and we're still continuing in our series, which become it has become my favorite series of all time of, of, for this whole ministry since I've been podcasting, called Jesus Said What? And this is episode number 39, I believe. 39 episodes of quoting Jesus and following where his quote is from, what he's saying, what it means, how powerful it is when we apply those quotes of Jesus to our lives and it continues to go. I don't think we will ever be able to outdo the promises of God, to outshine God's glory. I don't think we'll be able to ever learn completely about our Lord and our Savior, my Lord, my Savior, the Lord Jesus. So that's why every time we see the Lord speaking, every time we see the Lord quoting um, what he said, it's a life-giving quote. Changes your life, literally. Amen. And today, I'm relying on Holy Spirit to continue to do that for us today. Today, we're going to talk about the afterlife because we just celebrated The most important thing, according to the Apostle Paul, the most important event in history that ever happened for a believer is the resurrection of our Lord, my Lord, Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul went on to say that, listen, if the resurrection of the Lord never happened, then we are the most to be pitied. We should be pitied the most of all people in the whole entire planet. Because we have no hope then. We have no resurrected Christ. We have no gospel if Jesus did not come back alive. So a lot of people look at that and they they mystify it. They put us in like some kind of crazy box of mysticism or spiritualism. Spiritism. Amen. And the crazy part about that is that Jesus didn't raise spiritually from the dead. He rose bodily from the dead. His body rose from the grave, not the spirit of Jesus. The body of Jesus rose from the dead. Because listen, if he would have just spiritually rose from the dead, then there would be no way to confirm the resurrection of the Lord. Because then everybody would be saying, well, you have to believe it in your mind. Let's just have faith that he rose from the dead. There's a uh, some of our friends and some other cults and stuff like that, they say that Jesus already came back, resurrected in the spirit, and he already came back to this planet, and he's somewhere among us. That's spiritism, that's mysticism, that's cultish activity. But we're not down with that over here on Soul Winners. We're going to be talking about the afterlife and the world to come. So what do you think about the resurrection? Amen. Um, I know there's a lot of videos going on right now. We just celebrated the resurrected Christ. Easter Sunday, right? Yeah, there were bunny rabbits and eggs and egg hunts and all that. To me, it's a big distraction. I know, you know, the youth ministers and church leaders have their reasons for that. I just don't understand it, and I probably won't ever understand it, right? Um, I think the greatest celebration of all our Christian life is the celebration of the resurrected king. Without that, according to the Apostle Paul, we don't have nothing to celebrate. Amen? So that's how important it is in the scriptures. Good morning, my bro, Gio, from Damascus Media TV. God bless you. It's good to see you on the Morning Devo. We're going to be in Luke chapter 7, verse 11 to 17. You know, that's that's going to be the basis of this whole Morning Devo. Amen? But there's, there's some information and some content I think you'll find interesting about the afterlife, how people think. We call them New Agers, right? New Agers think about the resurrection and afterlife in a different way. They made it popular, this idea of the afterlife, the out-of-body experiences. You ever heard of that? I had an out-of-body experience. Reincarnation, you ever heard of that? Coming back in a different form. I saw an interview last week. An evangelist was asking a person, what do you think happens to you after life? 
and the young woman, the young lady was like, oh, I think I come, I'm going to come back as a tree. I'm going to come back as this. I'll come back as that. Then um, the evangelist asked the obvious question, what were you before? You were a human then. She was like, I don't know. And he says, what confirms that you're going to be a tree after you die? She was like, I don't know. And he said, why do you believe that? It's almost like she was about to say, I don't know why I believe it. And then she went into this whole energy thing. Those are new agers talking about the afterlife. and talking about that we're just energy. And they don't really believe in God. They believe in a higher power, our energy of the higher power. And they said that how they get to the next afterlife is that they just transfer their energy from this side. Body decays. They said the body is dying. And so the evangelist asked, if the body's dying, are we losing energy? She thought about it for a little while. She was like, no, we're not losing energy. We're just being transformed into another energy, a higher power. It's mysticism, man. It's not biblical. It, it has no base in the Bible other than the people in the Bible who were into that kind of mysticism in the scriptures. Easter comes from Ishtar, a Babylonian goddess, and the death and resurrection of Christ was no arbitrary event or a time. It was intentionally on Passover. Yeah. Yeah. When I say Easter, I say it lightly because everybody knows pretty much about Easter. But the celebration um, of the eggs and the Easter bunny and all that stuff is from other sources. Amen. I'm talking about the resurrection of the Lord. I don't know. A lot of people don't call Easter Resurrection Sunday, but that's what it is. And there's a lot of traditions in it. But I believe the whole theme of celebrating Easter or Resurrection Sunday, the theme should be the Lord and his resurrection. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, we're going to pray now. And then we're going to share this out for like 60 seconds. And when we come back, we'll get into the afterlife and the world to come. What do you think about the resurrection? Jesus said, what episode number 39? Father, I thank you for what you did, what you proved in all of history that you came back from the dead. Your word says that you were the first of the firstborn to rise from the dead. Biblically speaking, that's something to investigate. You weren't created by God. You are God, the creator, in the form of a man, came to this earth, virgin birth, lived 33 and a half years, died on a cross willingly, you willingly died on the cross for us. And I thank you so much for that sacrifice that you made for us, Lord. And then crucified on the cross, buried in a bar- borrowed tomb, and then three days later rose again from the grave, proving once and for all to this whole entire universe that you have the keys to heaven and and earth, you have the keys to heaven and hell, and you have conquered death, and you have conquered sin. You destroyed and killed sin when you came back to life. And I thank you, Lord God, even though that we struggle with sin, that we are not sinners, we are children of the living God, and we are holy because you said you are holy, we are holy. You said we are righteous because you are righteous, and you said we are born again, we are transformed, we are new creations in Christ. And I thank you for all of that, Lord Jesus. We pray for every single person who has a skeptical mindset, who has yet to believe in the Lord as Savior. I pray for them as well, Lord God, that you will open their eyes just like you opened my eyes in the year 2001. I thank you, Lord God, for my family. Guide, guard, and protect them. And guide, guard, and protect every single family member represented on the other side, representing their families on the other side of the screen and on the other side of this mic. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's share this out. 60 seconds when we come back, we'll dive into this morning Devo. Amen. About the resurrected Christ. I'll be right back.
Amen. Amen. I don't think I put the music on. Nope. I don't think I put the music on. So I apologize for the podcasters for that silence, that weird, that weird silence for a minute because I didn't put the background music on there as I usually do. Amen. Good morning, Sister Joanne. I saw you here. Yeah, there she goes. Amen. And um, let's go for it. Let's see what the Lord has for us today as we put up the presentation that I have prepared for you last night. Amen. After the resurrection, amen, what happened? What happens after we die? Because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that created a space for us to believe that there is life after death. As a matter of fact, that's nothing new according to the scriptures because some of the prophets, like Elijah, for instance, uh, uh, a kid died and he literally stretched himself over that kid, that child, and that child came back to life. From the power of God, amen, through the prophet. So we believe in this because we see it all through the scriptures, amen? All through the scriptures, we see it. So after the resurrection, after life and the world to come, amen. Let me just hide my cursor because that's annoying. All right. Amen. All right. So what is true about life after death? A lot of people have a different approach. A lot of people have different ideas. But did you know that all religions teach something about an afterlife? Why wouldn't they? We know as believers, as Christ followers, that there's more to life than than just this life. We see it all through the scriptures. We see it in the book of Genesis. Remember, the Lord told them because they disobeyed his command or his, yeah, his orders, then truly they were going to die. Right? Die and keep dying in original language. But they weren't supposed to die. So because of the fall of man, believe it or not, it created a need for redemption, created a need for a redeemer to give us the life back that we lost because of mankind's disobedience. Adam and Eve represented mankind. So in our modern day, right, the approach of the afterlife is pretty much the sum of a person's being is no more than its physical parts. And when the body ceases to live, the person no longer exists outside of the memory of those still alive. Right? That's what the New Agers are saying. That's what the spiritualists are saying. That's what the scientism people are saying. Or the science, modern science says, or they call it just uh, scientism. That can only come to that kind of conclusion based on ruling out all other evidence. Like they don't believe in life after death. But as believers in God, the one who gives life, the one who takes life, and the one who can resurrect the life, is exactly why we believe in the afterlife. Raising of the dead becomes more fully developed. We see it in Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. And mind you, this is a new covenant. In the old covenant, there already have been resurrections. I know a lot of people are like, what do you mean? People have come back to life. God empowered prophets to bring dead people back to life. Read it in the scriptures. Look it up. But let's go to Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17. The first example of resurrection in the ministry of Yeshua, Jesus, took place in the city of Naim. As Jesus entered the city, he saw a funeral procession. A widow's son had died, and Jesus felt compassion for her. He came up and touched the coffin, and the bearers came to a halt. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. The boy arose, and the people reacted by glorifying God. They knew that Jesus was a great prophet and that God had visited his people. You see that? Something tells me they knew about the prophets of old 
And they knew that when a prophet walked in to a situation where something was dead or someone was dead, that means there was not it was not over. If God would work through that prophet in the old covenant, people were coming back to life. Now they see Jesus and they think he's just a prophet, but he's more than a prophet. And he gives power back to this young man, gives life back to this young man. And he says, I say to you, arise. The power of God's quote, the power of the Jesus quotes, the power of the resurrected Christ, giving people their life back after they were physically dead. That means that there's a spirit in us. That means there's a soul in us. And that means our body, when it dies, it's not over. According to the power of God and his word, it's not over. There's something else more coming. There's something else more coming. Don't believe the atheists. Don't believe the cynics. Don't believe the people who are going around saying, once you die, that's it. There is no release of no power, no soul, no spirit. Those are lies from the devil, and they're being influenced by the lives of the devil. There's more to life. Matthew chapter 9, 18 and 21 in the scripture right here, we see, while he was saying these things to them, a ruler, synagogue official, entered the house and kneeled down and worshipped him. Jesus was getting worship, saying, My daughter has just now died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Tremendous amount of faith in the Lord. Tremendous amount of faith in the Lord. Verse 19, Jesus got up and began to accompany the ruler with his disciples. Then a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years came up behind him and touched the tassel fringe of his outer robe. Verse 21, for she had been saying to herself, if I can only touch his outer robe, I will be healed. So Jesus was approached by someone to go lay hands on someone's daughter. So she could come back to life. And while he was on his way on that assignment, a woman that has been hemorrhaging, bleeding for 12 years, was on her assignment to reach Jesus just to touch his garment. And she was healed. Oh, Jesus is not God. He doesn't no. Jesus is God. And he proves it all through the scriptures. Where eyewitness accounts. Same chapter 22 and 23. But Jesus turning and seeing her said. Take courage daughter. Amen. If he's the father. In the image of a man. He's calling people sons and daughter. So he calls a daughter. Your personal trust. And confident faith in me. Has made you well. Praise God. Somebody needs their personal trust and confident faith in the Lord to make them well today. If that's you, take courage. And at once, at once, the woman was healed. No, not just healed, completely healed. Completely healed. God starts, he will finish. And this woman had tremendous faith. If only I could get to Jesus, I'll be healed. While he was already on his way to another assignment to go lay hands on this ruler's daughter, that ruler had tremendous faith, saying, All you got to do is go over there and lay hands, and she will get her life back. She will come back alive. And this woman was like, All I need to do is get to Jesus, and I will be healed. Now I'm saying to myself, and I'm saying to you, my friend, All you got to do is get to Jesus for your deliverance, for your healing, for the dead things of your life to come back to life. Come on. Verse 23, when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players who were professional hired mourners. Get that. They They were hired to mourn for people who died. And the grieving crowd making an uproar. You know, when somebody dies... We feel different because we know 
deep in our core that dying and death wasn't supposed to be like that. It's not supposed to be like that. Keep on going to Matthew 9, 24 to 26. He said, Jesus said, go away. For the girl is not dead. So basically he's kicking out these professional mourners and the people who are making an uproar. He said, go away. For the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And they laughed and they jeered at him. But when the crowd had gone, had been sent outside, Jesus went in and took her by the hand and the girl got up. And the news about this spread throughout all the debt district. Come oh, on, man. We, we're talking about the resurrected Lord. We're talking about the one who has the keys to our afterlife. Amen. And the world to come. The resurrection of our Savior proved that we don't believe in a spiritual resurrection that he didn't spiritually rise. We believe in a bodily resurrection. The bodily resurrection. The resurrection that many view as a sacrifice of Jesus to regain the temple of God. Holy Spirit in us lives in the temple, our bodies, and giving us these resurrected beliefs giving us this new life because we have a risen Christ. There's a lot more. I'll probably make this a series because after the resurrection, things were still happening. After the resurrection of the Lord, things are still happening to this very day. We don't serve a dead God. We worship and serve a living God. He's still alive. So, I don't know what's going on in Christian circles or, I don't know, um, I, want, I don't want to say the body of Christ. I just want to say, like, we believe, right, in the resurrection. But do we really believe in the resurrected Christ? Because if we did, and I'm challenging myself too, not throwing shots at nobody, saying, why are we not more excited about the resurrected Christ. And I'm not talking about why are we not so excited about celebrating Easter. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, why are we not walking around knowing that we serve a resurrected Christ and acting that way? Including myself. This life is it's hard. It's a fallen world. It's a fallen situation. Um, we're dying. But as a believer in the Lord, we don't die and stay dead. There's an afterlife. We don't die and stay in the ground. There's an afterlife. We are part of the resurrection when it comes to believing in our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus. We have a resurrected life already. People want to challenge that all day. They can. It's going to take them billions of years to try to say it's not true. And even beyond a billion years, because the truth is already established. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And also, in the scriptures, he talks about himself being the resurrection. Religious people say, oh no, I know there's a resurrection coming. I know there's a Savior coming. I know there's a Messiah coming. Religious people are still waiting for the Messiah. Born again people know that he came, right? He was born from a virgin, he lived, died, and rose again. Short story of the gospel. Good Friday, I struggled um, celebrating Good Friday if I didn't know about Sunday. If I didn't know about the three days later, or the two days later, you know, in our calendar. But three days later, he rose from the dead. If I had not known that, uh, I would have a harder time celebrating Good Friday. I would be like, what's good about my Lord dying and being crucified? That gruesome death on that gruesome cross um, from those professional executioners. When he got on that cross, he was being executed. He wasn't being, you know, what? 
just made fun of and mocked and um, accused of all this wrong stuff. Not only that, he was being nailed to a cross, to a place of uh, persecution, to a place, what's that word, man? Uh, They were professional executioners, a place of execution for not his sin, because he did not sin, for not his guilt, because they shouldn't have nothing, he should not have nothing to be feel guilty about, because he was without sin. He did nothing wrong. It was for my sin and for your sin that he willingly died on a cross for us. But then, him being God, he didn't stay dead. The Bible says you can't keep a good man down for long. The Bible alludes to that. The Bible also says that Jesus killed death. Amen. The Bible explains how he did it. We have a resurrected Christ. We don't have a dead Savior. We have a living Savior. We don't have a dead God. We have a living God. We're not into spiritualism, spiritism, and all that ism. We're into the gospel. We're into the author and finisher and perfecter of our faith. We're into the one who died and rose again. That's who we're into. Holy Spirit is in us, and he's working out his truth through us. Amen? As we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. There's a lot here, man. A lot of notes, but I'm going I'm to share. Let me see. Yeah, I can share one Old Testament instance of a physical resurrection. Elijah. He was in a widow's house who was commanded by God to provide for his needs. When her son died, the lady that was, you know, being hospital to the prophet Elijah. When her son died, Elijah prayed, stretched himself upon the child three times, and life returned to the boy. The Lord loves that number three. It wasn't the first time that the boy came to life. It wasn't the second time the boy came to life. It was the third time that he came, that boy came back to life. Amen? It took three days Jesus took three days to raise from the grave. So, the Lord loves the number three. You can find that story if you don't believe me. It's in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 17 to 22. Then Elisha, not Elijah, Elisha had a similar encounter. Elisha was under Elijah. And Elisha and got that double portion of the mantle was passed to Elisha from Elijah. Then Elisha had a similar encounter recorded in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, where God used him to bring another boy back to life. The prophets of old were empowered by the God of the old covenant and the God, the same God of the new covenant, empowered them to let the world know that he has the power to bring people back to life bodily. Oh, I got a spiritual um, awakening. I got a spiritual resurrection. Whatever that means, people rather go to things that they can't see as evidence or they can't prove as evidence. If I go around saying, oh, Jesus was in a spirit all through his ministry. No, nobody saw him. People just felt him or they just believed in him, but he really didn't exist bodily. That would be weird. And that's not the gospel, by the way. But the Bible talks about bodily resurrections, physical resurrections, people coming back to life. Um, I don't know if these young boys spoke about what they saw. You know, I don't think they explained it as an out of body experience. Uh, we have those accounts now in our time that people said and the, and the doctors confirmed that these people were dead. And then they when they wake up, when they come back to life. They talk about what they saw on the other side, on the other side of the curtain. And some of them even see things that the scripture says that they should have seen. Others say things that the Bible doesn't talk about. And but listen, if they say whatever they saw, that's between them and God. Amen. But I believe in the afterlife because I believe in the one who gives life. 
and takes us to a place. He says he is, you know, preparing a room for us. And he's been doing that for a long time. And there is no death that can hold a believer down to a grave. When we have a Christ, a God, a Savior who's coming back. And when he comes back, the first to raise would be those who are in Christ, who are dead in Christ. The grave people who were raised from the dead. People who are even, um, and it's God we're talking about, people who are even cremated. Their bodies are going to come back. And then we're going to be transformed into a, a new body that is ready to be heaven bound. And whatever that looks like is going to be greater than my imagination and your imagination and the imagination of Hollywood or anybody who has an imagination like that. Greater than that, because we're going to be like Jesus in that way, in that powerful way. So I guess I got more here. So we're going to take this low willing. We'll continue the afterlife. A lot happened after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And I believe I hit upon this a couple of years ago. Amen. Because I know we celebrate the resurrected Christ. And then what? A lot of people think that's the end to it. Oh, you, Jesus rose from his grave and that's it. That's why they only show up to church on Christmas and Easter. We call them priesters. Amen. But there's more to it. So if you if that's you, you're a priester, you just go to church on Easter and Christmas, Christmas and Easter, come back. And you'll find out there's more to our Lord and more to our Savior than what you thought. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. Sister Joanne says, I haven't seen you going live a couple of days. Yeah, I took some time off um, a couple of weeks back. I was sick and then I came back. But I've been on last week. I was on last week. Look at um, the past lives and you'll see me and uh, a couple of times. I think I took Friday off too. Thank you for being concerned and noticing when I'm not live. So God bless you all. I'm out of here. God keep you all. And remember always that God is good. Peace.